morning my soccer universe quick time is on a strike so i'm doing this on my phone now i hope the video quality is also all right and i have the laptop right here so i'm kind of multitasking in this way um i want to tell you a little bit about the games that i saw this weekend which were actually not that that many that i saw fully of course they're in Chelsea, I saw the Chelsea match yesterday, uh, you already saw my video on the Club World Cup, uh, so I'm not going to touch about that, we're talking European leagues, but I want to also go, since it is now the time where you know most leagues take a break, except the Premier League, where we can look also at uh, some chances of how things are standing. And for that, let's start in La Liga, um, Friday with a A-bar 3-0 win over Granada, and Granada Yes, you had a good start, but we are getting on a worrying uh, time. I mean, Granada has been dropping over the weeks. Uh, Sevilla gets a win at uh, Mallorca, which puts, as we'll see, will put them back into contention somewhat. -ish. Barcelona, 4-1 win of Alaves. I saw that one. Uh, yeah, what can I say? It was Barcelona. It was a clinical performance by Barcelona in, in a way with a great goal by Messi. Uh, Yes, they always seem so. I, just, I think put put was fine. I was on uh, Griezmann also had one in there. Um, it was two 0 at the half. I think they made it then. Uh, Vidal had also one. Um, Alaves got a goal, but then you know when Messi says I'm, I'm gonna score, he's gonna score, and that was that. So kind of a bounce back from the classical. I really thought the Barcelona was disappointing. We are out with Getafe one nil. Where to lead Valencia? I saw a little bit out of from that one. I saw one nil for Valladolid, but didn't see it all the way to the end. It ended one one. Uh, again, Valencia kind of mm, somewhere in the middle of things. Leganes beats Esp Espanyol in the bottom of the table clash. That was a huge one. Uh, I wish I would have seen Osasuna Real Sociedad. Um, it was just at a time where I really needed to take a break. I saw the second half of Atletico Madrid against Real Betis. Um, great goal by Correa to make it 1 0. And I think even the 2 0 by uh, Morata was a great one. He backheeled it. Yes, it got deflected in. It was really nicely taken. Uh, Real Betis puts one back much, much uh, later. Levante against Celta Vigo 3 1 kind of puts v Celta also in some trouble. Uh, more trouble than they used to. And then. A game that I then decided ultimately not to watch uh, since I have one more working day before Christmas. Real Madrid against Athletic Club and it ends in a goalless draw. I was surprised about that. Which means now that Barcelona is two points clear uh, at the top of the table. And just uh, three days ago I said I think Real Madrid is going to win. I still think Real Madrid is the better team of the two this season. But you know, if you make a lot of changes, that's what's going to happen. Sevilla uh, is in third and Atletico Madrid is also kind of in touch with the top now. As is Real Sociedad. Um, Getafe, uh, yep could be in there. I think Athletic Club, this is where it dropped Atletico Valencia, not that they're out of, uh, out of it, but they could uh, get in there, Levante, Villarreal. We have kind of a broad middle, Granada fell to the 11th, um, and when I look uh, towards the bottom, yeah, uh, Mallorca, Vigo, Leganes, Espanyol really looks dreary. I mean, uh, if Espanyol gets relegated, this is kind of a disaster after they had a great season last season. A little bit surprising. Let's look at the chances. Uh, for that, as I said, it's a two horse race. Uh, 530 gives Barca 53% chance of winning the title and 38% to Real Madrid. So Barca still is just at a little, little, little edge uh, over that. But other than that, let's see, uh, we have Atletico at 5%, Sevilla 2%, and Real Sociedad at 1%. So, yeah, um, that's as we said, they are all in touch, but it's really between Barca and Real Madrid. Uh, that, I think, is comes as no, no surprise. If you look now, Champions League spots, they give a decent chance still to Valencia. I would agree with that, maybe a little bit Athletic Bilbao. Um, in towards the relegation battle, ah, it's a huge zone, but it starts with a bar uh, at 13%, where I really would say I would be worried. 24% uh, Alaves, Valladolid 25%, and Vigo 41%. There, it's already pretty big in Espanol, it's 65%. Doesn't look good, I have to say. 
Premier League. I actually saw quite some Premier League for a change, uh, which I think is it was 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 a cool thing. I did not watch Everton Arsenal, which was drill nil nil. Uh, West Ham Liverpool was postponed. Bournemouth loses one nil to uh, Burnley. Um, Sheffield United gets another win. They will be high up in the table, as we'll see. Southampton gets a important win against uh, Aston Villa. I saw quite some of Newcastle Crystal Palace, but it was the same time as the Barca game. I was a little bit more focused on Barca, but I actually thought that. Uh, Crystal Palace was a little bit more in the game for most of the time, only, only that Newcastle came on and they get the winner uh, late on, I'll make it 1-0, Wolves win 2-1 two, one, two, one at Norwich, um, also important win and then it, it was all City against Leicester and that was the strangest game because City really went all out, all out on Leicester and had many 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 chances in the first 10-20 minutes but couldn't convert and what happens? Leicester, Jamie Vardy with a great uh, in, in, in individual action makes it right around the 20th minute, uh, 20, tw uh, you know, 20th, 25th minute, a great goal and um, scores 1-0. I was actually pretty happy about that. Uh, yes, it was slo uh, sloppy defending, but it was also a great goal. You gotta give credit where credit is due. That city then comes back uh, speaks to uh, their resilience in, in in a way. I mean, they were the better team. Um, Mares from a deflected shot uh, makes it then um, one one, and it was really he takes the shot. It would not not have gone in, but it goes very weird. I think to the legs of Soyuncu, and then in the goal. That was a bad one, and then yeah, penalty given, and Gundogan makes it two one before the half, and Gabriel Jesus. Just when I thought that Leicester might do something, Gabriel Jesus puts the game to rest, and it could have been way more than. So Manchester City three one. Leicester City has now pretty tough test scale because next up on Boxing Day is Liverpool, and we'll know a lot more about Leicester City then. I don't think they will be title chance, but I think they could easily make the Champions League. The way everything else is going. But let's see how it goes. I need a Leicester City jersey though. Don't have one. That's not good. Uh, Watford beats United 2-0. What can I say about United? Um, you beat Manchester City, you beat Tottenham, uh, and as soon as it goes to some more minor opponents, you're not performing. That's not a way to go. Chelsea, on the other hand, had a brilliant performance at Tottenham. I actually expected a much more even game and for five minutes I thought that oh yeah Chelsea is a little bit in trouble and then they took over and especially Villian and Alonso were outstanding players Villian with a nice corner dummy uh, walks into the box and curls it nicely in yes the corner could have been avoided uh, I like the, the counter the compliment they said um, I think it was Aurier who misjudged this header that should go back to the goalkeeper that yeah, he won't become a ballerina anytime soon with uh, this lack of core coordination. Spurs was not present. It was all Chelsea. Uh, they really put in a complete performance. Uh, Spurs only, I think around the 30th had a few uh, shots, but it was even not even shots, shot, shots and goal. And then if you have a crazy goalkeeper like Gazaniga, who comes out and Kung Fu makes a Kung Fu tackle at the ball where he could go with a the hand there and just slams down a uh, Chelsea attacker that it was not given a penalty from the get-go was to me a disgrace fortunately VAR for once overturned I thought in England that they don't overturn uh, decisions but it was a penalty Villian makes it 2-0 two, two um, and to be honest there was not much coming from Spurs the only thing of note was on the red card for Son who was pleading that he didn't do anything bad yes Rüdiger sold it but you know if you go with the foot up I'm sorry this is a red card this is an attempt uh, at, uh, attempted violent play uh, even if you didn't hit it I think it should be a red card any time of the day so yeah fully deserved red card for uh, Son uh, Abraham I think made a, th a thorough goal but ruled out for offside Spurs didn't have a shot on goal until very, very late by Harry Kane. Really, really bad showing from them. And I think that Lampard uh, outsmarted his mentor in a way. Uh, Mourinho speaks also. Uh, you could see how Lampard was smiling all the time. 
table now. Liverpool has a game in hand. <laughs> Leeds now with 10 points ahead of Leicester. It's actually 13 if because I think they will get the win in if even if not. One point behind is Manchester City and then Chelsea. You know, those three are in their own league at the moment. Although, you know, it, it remains to be seen what Leicester will be doing. Then Chelsea um, kind of hanging in the middle. Sheffield, Wolves, Spurs, United, Newcastle. Oh, it's a long time until you see Arsenal in 11th. Uh, Crystal Palace so you know those are teams that go maybe for Europa League but I actually, actually want to say Spurs that's where it ends I don't think that the United will get in in, in, in there um, and towards the bottom we have kind of many teams with 19 points Bournemouth Everton West Ham West Ham has a game in hand but it's against Liverpool Southampton has a little bit of a cushion now but you know Villa Norwich Watford doesn't look good let's see what 538 says in this case um they Liverpool they give it 82%, Manchester City says 17%, and that's that. Um, for the Champions League, Leicester and Chelsea, Spurs has only minimum chance as does United. Arsenal is about as likely to get relegated as they um, um, now to qualify for the Champions League. That you have to have or wrap your head around. Uh, speaking of re relegation, it's really like I said, West Ham and Southampton should be worried, maybe Bournemouth as well, but it's really Villa, Watford and Norwich, those are the ones that really are in trouble. Bundesliga, uh, I saw minimum uh, stuff from the Bundesliga, it was all this conference. I mean, I saw a little bit of uh, Hoffman Dortmund, but at that point Dortmund was 1-0 up in the full control, then they relinquished in the last few minutes. I mean, Dortmund is also... You never know what you're gonna get for them. The Bundesliga is probably the of all the leagues. All the league I can make a um, claim the as, as being the craziest, but there's one leader so clear, and in the Bundesliga we don't have that. So Hoffenheim beats Dortmund amazingly. Leverkusen wins at Mainz. Bayern Munich gets a very, very late win against Wall. Wolfsburg, I saw Schalke Freiburg. It was 1 1 when I joined, then Freiburg got a penalty with a Panenka made it 2-1 but Schalke gets an equalizer Köln gets a late win over Bremen that was um, Abstiegskampf pur as they say in Germany uh, you know relegation battle pure relegation battle Leipzig was 1-0 that Augsburg needed three late goals I think in the last 50 minutes to turn it around to secure their uh, top spot over the winter uh, and Hertha holds Gladbach to a 0-0 I think Gladbach really needs a break as well because they were kind of petering off with all the Europa League battle Düsseldorf beats uh, Union 2-1, which was a vital win for them. And Paderborn surprisingly beats Frankfurt 2-1. Frankfurt also won teams. They really need a break. Frankfurt is in bad, bad shape, I have to say. I don't think the coach might make it long if they continue this way. Uh, in the table is now Leipzig, two points out of Gladbach, two points out of Bayern, three points out of Dortmund. I think those four all have realistic chances for a title although I think Dortmund's chances are dwindling with every bad result from now on Schalke is kind of in there but not really I would say uh, same goes for Leverkusen Hoffmann this is all midfield stuff Freiburg Wolfsburg uh, Augsburg and I think at 11 we can actually start talking about relegation where the really teams in danger are Kern who actually now three wins in a row move themselves out of there I'm still hoping for that this momentum carries forward and Dusseldorf is on the relegation spot Bremen and Paderborn are down I, I would be uh, stunned if Bremen goes down let's see the chances um, for it's still Bayern to win it and I have a feeling like that 59% although Leipzig is good but when I remember how Bayern played Leipzig in Leip Leipzig it was a lucky draw for Leipzig to be honest so um, I would still give it to Bayern Leipzig has a decent chance but then Dortmund and Gladbach are more or less out of it 3 or 2% two, two only so that's that but um, those four, I think, will make a Champions League spot. Leverkusen might go in there, but I don't think so. Uh, and when we look now down to its relegation, yes, uh, Bremen, uh, Düsseldorf and Paderborn are in there. Köln, Mainz, uh, Union are given quite good rate. Uh, you know, they might be in danger, but not as clearly as those bottom three. So that's something to note. Serie A had a weird round, I have to say, uh, where we had already the Juve game because there was a Supercoppa more on that in just a little bit. Fiorentina uh, loses at home to Roma 1-4. I saw that game and I have to say Roma, Fiorentina started out nicely playing forward as they usually do. Then Roma scores within two minutes, two goals, one by Jacko and one nice free kick by Kolarov. 
I love those Roma jerseys. I think this was one of my favorite jersey matchups this year, the uh, purple of Fiorentina, although I didn't like the black pants. But then uh, the Roma away kit is just great. Fiorentina pulls one back a little bit later. Um, but just when you think they might go, it is on Yolo mix in second half. Uh, 3 1, and then they add a fourth one. Uh, and Montella, bye bye. Unfortunately, he gets the sack as well. I think ever since he left Fiorentina the first time, and uh, you know, the Milan stint broke him. Uh, Udine wins against Cagliari 2 1. That was a surprising result. Inter 4 0 over Genoa, the Romelu Lukaku show. Spal wins at Torino 2 1. So Torino is also one of those teams. Then the result that I was waiting for this game. I actually watched it because our uh our plans got a little bit shuffled so i managed to watch this one atalanta in green i think the happiest i was when i saw milan is playing in red and black i said wow and then i see atalanta in green and oof, yes christmas game blah 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 don't play in green at home uh at least the goalkeeper played in the atalanta jerseys the game was i mean atalanta for the first 20 20 minutes played like they wanted to swallow milan alive uh Papu Gomez with a great goal to make it 1-0. Um, then Milan could get a little bit of a great hold them at bay, but you know, all the chances were just minimal chances. And um, they were lucky to get with a 1-0 into the uh, break. In the second half, I think they tried something, but I have to say, uh, bringing on, I think, Piontek and Leao kind of left a big hole in the midfield, and then Atalanta was pouncing. 2-0. I think Pazalic uh, 3-0, Ilicic, I think he also made the 4-0, and then he went off for Muri, and I'm saying to myself, this is just unfair. You take off one good player, and then you bring on another striker, that's cracks like crazy. And they're not even having Zapata at the moment. It's Atalanta outclassed Milan on every account. Heaviest defeat for Milan. Uh, and I watched most of it. I think I watched until the 80th second and I said, you gotta take it all in. I mean, this is the pain of that Milan. I mean, if you play Rodriguez, if you play Jalanoglu, if you play Suso, I think those are the players that have to be replaced immediately, I would say. Uh, not even talking about a striker. Let's just say the better. Lecce loses home to Bologna 2-3. Bologna was 3-0 up. Parma, Brescia. Brescia had a 1-0 lead uh, late in the game until Parma equalizes. And Napoli gets a rare win. 2-1 against Sassuolo. And Hellas uh, plays at Lazio uh, in February. So in the table right now, we have Inter and Juve uh, level on points. Lazio with a game to spare which is now 6 points. Uh, Six points but could be three points Roma is also kind of in touch but Roma I think Lazio could join the top three but I don't think they will stay up there Roma uh, is kind of for the fourth uh, spot in Italy as is Atalanta I think Cagliari is slowly dropping unfortunately Parma Napoli um, yeah here we are midfield this is Europa League battle Bologna Milan is in 11th uh, they dropped the point because of goal difference that's how bad this was um towards the bottom i we have to speak udine now with the win gets a little bit out of it but fiorentina looking in danger and fiorentina would be such a fun team to watch they just cannot get it together in a way lecce sampdoria brescia spal genoa all down there let's look at the chances for these uh, teams we have juve is still giving 59 percent chance to win it all Inter 27 and you know the uh, Lazio, Roma, Atalanta there are still three that have minor chances uh, for the Champions League spots yeah there are five teams uh, for four spots Napoli don't think I don't believe that Milan should be that high up there I honestly do not think so any, any, any anymore they are overrated in this um, setting here uh, if we look into re relegation, yeah, it's a four-way battle. Brescia, Lecce, Genoa, Spal. I would actually, Udine, Sampdoria, Verona, I would put in there. I think they are in serious trouble. Let's quickly talk Supercoppa, where Lazio outclassed Juventus, completely dominated them, uh, and absolutely deservedly won. They've played for once with some... Uh, sponsor but it was not a compromise so it, i think they were promoting their own team in that way um i was also not surprised uh, not impressed by uh, juventus playing with arabic lettering on the back 
please. It's already bad enough that it plays so I'll sort it really. A super copa, don't sell it that way. I don't want to say more. I mean, Lazio wins 3-1 three, three, uh, and they seem to have you as number at the moment. That's why maybe we should keep an eye on that. I just don't quite know yet. Uh, Liga, I saw a little bit of Liga uh, and I actually saw Marseille against Nîmes. Um, and I love those new jerseys, though Marseille runs away. Easy 3-1 winners. I didn't see Rennes, but though that was probably the one that I would have watched. Uh, it was 1-0, Monaco beats Lille 5-1, surprise result, Montpellier 4-0 over Brest, not Angers 1-2, Nice to lose 3-0, Strasbourg Saint-Étienne 2-1, Reims Lyon 1-1, Dijon 2-2, Metz and PSG wins 4-1 against Amiens. I saw a little bit also of the Reims Lyon the last few minutes when I knew that Marseille uh, is decided. But again, those Nîmes jerseys with the crocodile scales, I need to do a Ligue 1 jersey review. PSG flying high, uh, even with the game in hand. Marseille's behind. I think those are the top two teams. And then Rennes, Lille, not Reims, Monaco, Angers. Maybe this is for getting up there this is the Euro the European spots uh Lyon is in the midfield this is not Bordeaux but you know you're never really out in France it's so uh tight and if you look at just the relegation battle we have not two teams that dropped off this is Nîmes and Toulouse but Amiens Metz Dijon um, right in there as well and given that the last place team is 12 points it's still kind of high let's look at the chances here uh we have PSG will win the league. Uh, Marseille looks good for the champ Champions League, and then you know they have only a third spot. So that's between Rennes, Lille, Monaco, and Lyon. And I don't think Lyon might make it in there. Uh, relegation battle, I think, is much more interesting. Nîmes and Toulouse look like they are in there now because they really have some distance. Uh, but Brest, Dijon, Amiens, and Metz are in danger. I know I should do a whole around round, but I actually want to only look at the Eredivisie because there we had some interesting results and um, we'll look at a bit more maybe uh, sometime later. Interesting results because Alkmaar at it, is lost to Sparta Rotterdam 3-0. PSV was 1-4-1 uh, after Mark van Bommel being fired and you know who is taking care of that when at it, is uh, floundering again? Ajax. Getting back with a 6-1 over Den Haag and are now on top again pretty clearly. I mean, it was one of the uh, last place teams. Feyenoord beats Utrecht 2-1, so they also are slowly climbing up again. But what looked like getting tighter, Ajax has a three-point lead again. Uh, and PSV is 10 points behind Willem Dwey, uh, 33 and Feyenoord 31. So if you look now in the Eredivisie, Champions, uh, Arsenal, uh, Ajax is given 89%, Alkma only 11%, and that's about that. Um, it's also for the two Champions League spots, it's between Ajax and AZ, and maybe PSV has a chance going in there. Well, it was a long video, actually. Uh, I knew it's gonna be long, but I think I will stop it here. We looked at six uh, top leagues, and I might do some smaller ones a little bit later on when I have more time. Um, let, let me know what you thought about the games that I watched, how I assessed them, uh, whether you want to add something, drop a comment below, also what you think about the chances, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon, bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!